Hi, everyone. So today we are talking about the Ben and Jerry's um, versus Unilever legal case. So this Ben and Jerry's versus Unilever case is, is a very interesting example of a legal challenge based on a, an acquisition agreement which of course was entered into during a uh, um, a, a merger and a, a, a mergers and acquisition transaction, and um, on in this particular case, it's actually focused on a disagreement on a political uh, uh, issue, which which is um, between uh, Israel and Palestine. So let's talk about that. Ben and Jerry's. What, what what is Ben and Jerry's, and why is it a peculiar company? Well, Ben and Jerry's Homemade Holdings uh, Inc. is a um, is is known under the, the name Ben and Jerry's, the, its commercial name Ben and Jerry's, and its brand Ben and Jerry's. And it's an American company that manufactures ice cream, frozen yogurt, and sorbet. I'm fairly sure everyone um, who is listening to this um, to this webinar has heard of Ben and Jerry's, and I'm sure you all enjoy uh, the ice creams like I do myself too. So Ben and Jerry's is one of the top premium ice cream brands on a par with Agen Daz, which is another famous American ice cream maker. And it was founded in 1978 by two Jewish American friends, Ben Cohen, Cohen and uh, Jerry Greenfield in Burlington, in Vermont, in uh, the United States of America. So in addition to making awesome ice cream with chunky bits, um, this, this um, particularity of having some chunky bits into the ice cream is, is to accommodate Ben Cohen, who is actually suffers from uh, um, anosmia. Anosmia is when you don't have the, the, um, the, uh, the sense of taste and the sense of smell. So um, in addition to making awesome ice cream with chunky bits, Ben & Jerry's is known the world over for taking clear and frank stances on current social, environmental and political issues, even when such views have nothing to do with ice cream or dairy products. So not only did and still does actually, Ben & Jerry's sign on to environmentalists political and LGBTQ external campaigns, which are managed by nonprofit and lobbying organizations. But Ben & Jerry's also launched to market many products with politically progressive messages. For example, it uh, launched the IDO, D-O-U-G-H, IDO, IDO, chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream to celebrate the, um, the US Supreme Court's ruling in support of same-sex marriage in the United States. Also, Ben & Jerry's launched the Yes Pecan, P-E-K, sorry, P-E-C for Charlie A-N, Yes Pecan flavor in reference to Barack Obama's victory in the 2008 US presidential election. So Ben & Jerry's sources from regional organic dairy farms usually uses only milk that does not contain artificial growth hormones, developed chemical free containers and also makes fair trade and organic uh, ingredients a priority. It even actually went to court to win the right to label its ice cream hormone free. And it won. This is the result of a three-part mission statement devised by Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield from inception for their business. First, they want Ben & Jerry's to make the world's best ice cream in the world. Um, sorry, to make the world's best ice cream. They want also to run a financially successful company and also to make the world a better place. As of 2019, Ben & Jerry's has production facilities in South Albans in Vermont, in Waterbury in Vermont, and in Helen Dawn in the Netherlands, and in Be'er Tuvia in Israel. So why are Ben and & Jerry's and Unilever connected? Well, in April 2000, Ben & Jerry's sold itself to food and consumer goods conglomerate Unilever PLC, which is headquartered in London in the United Kingdom for $326 million, 
um, as Unilever was looking to add a premium ice cream brand in its portfolio, which would rival Agen Daz. Um, in the acquisition agreement entered into between Ben and Jerry's and Unilever, it is set out that, I quote here, the power is given to Ben and Jerry's board of independent directors who will oversee the social mission of Ben and Jerry's and the essential integrity of the Ben and Jerry's brand. Therefore, while the day-to-day -day running and strategic commercial choices at Ben and Jerry's are under Unilever's sole control and supervision, the ice cream company retained an independent board of directors, which has full authority over the same mission of uh, the social mission of Ben and Jerry's pursuant to the terms of the acquisition agreement. So Ben and Jerry's retained independent board of uh, 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 directors describes itself as having a responsibility to protect the company's essential brand integrity and to pursue its social mission. So you see, this is an interesting acquisition and governance process because Ben and uh, Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield really thought that their business had a sort of particular, peculiar DNA, very much embedded into um, respecting social values and um, and strong social commitments towards the community, and they wanted. Of, even after they acquisition, they, 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 they sell to Unilever, uh, they wanted to make sure that their company, their baby, so to speak, would uh, keep on having such DNA, uh, which is really embedded in its in in in, in the uh, in the brand of Ben Jerry's. And so this is why this independent board of directors was set up to look uh, solely after the um, the social mission of Ben and Jerry's, allegedly. So. Uh, since the, uh, the, the the acquisition in 2000, it's not been an easy ride, to be fairly honest. Um, Unilever's wholly owned subsidiary has uh, had difficulty in, in implementing this partition between the um, decision-making process for the commercial and uh, strategic decisions of a brand uh, and um, the uh, strategic process. The, decision process for the social mission of a brand. And so quite a lot of tensions arose. For example, when Unilever took over for, uh, and, um, and uh, acquired Ben & Jerry's, they started laying off some people. And that was a, a, a new thing at Ben & Jerry's because they hardly have ever had or, or decided to actually fire anyone. Um, also, another example is that when um, Unilever became uh, the master of Ben and Jerry, so to speak. It prevented employees from emblazoning the Ben and Jerry's logo on a bus driving these employees to a protest. So that came as shock because, you know, going to a social protest as a Ben and Jerry's employee was something that was done day in, day out um, at Ben and Jerry's pre-acquisition time. But then Unilever had a bit of a, you know, um, so I'm sure that, you know, things sort of, quite quite down and, and in fact the Ben and Jerry's acquisition by Unilever um, is often cited in business law school as an exemplary uh, merger and acquisition and also how to implement you know changes in, in a post-merger uh, process uh, but um, Things are changing and, and are getting quite messy at the moment between Unilever and uh, Ben and Jerry. So the honeymoon period of his marriage has definitely ended and the spouses are actually going to court. So why are there some legal challenges uh, between Ben and Jerry's and Unilever? What's going on exactly? Well, the deadlock is on Israel. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, Ben and Jerry's mission statement is to make the world a better place. Yeah. And as part of his mission, Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield and the CEO of Ben Jerry's were contacted in 2012 by fellow Vermont neighbors called Vermonteers for a Just Peace in Palestine slash Israel, VTJP. And, and after they, the VTJP learned that ice cream produced by Ben and Jerry's franchise in Israel, run by local franchisee Avi Zinger, 
from Israeli company American Quality Products since 1987. So this ice cream made in by the franchisee American Quality Products in uh, Israel was being sold in Israeli, Israeli settlements in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. So under international law and under the um, uh, various guidelines given by the United Nations Security Council, these Israeli settlements are deemed to be a flagrant, a flagrant of violation under international law um, of, uh, in particular, human rights and um, and also uh, the uh, you know nation rights of Palestine. So, as of November 2014, 232 organizations across the U.S. and in 17 countries worldwide. Um, have signed a letter written by the Montes for a Just Peace in Palestine slash Israel, calling on Ben and Jerry's to end its commercial ties to such Israeli settlements. So through this sort of, you know, ra raising awareness actions, uh, by 2015, Ben and Jerry's has decided to donate its licensing fees from Israel to organizations supporting Palestinians. Also, its Israeli franchisee began sourcing almonds from a Palestinian farmer cooperative. Sounds a bit underwhelming, but anyway, at least the, French, the Israeli franchisee did, did its bit. Other than that, Ben and Jerry's held back from further action in, in Israel um, around 2015. But on the 19th of July 2021, Ben and Jerry's announced its plans to end sales in occupied Palestine territory, OPT, within which Israeli settlements are considered illegal under international law and by the United Nations uh, Council, as I mentioned before. The company statement notes that it was responding to the concerns shared with us by our founders and trusted partners while confirming that sales operations would continue in Israel beyond 2022 through a different arrangement. So this statement, this mission statement was posted in July 2021 on Ben and Jerry's website saying we're going to stop selling ice cream in the Israeli settlements and we're also going to change the way we do business in Israel. So due to the refusal of Ben and Jerry's Israel, so that's the local franchisee Avi Zinger I mentioned before was operating under American quality products, to comply with this policy, the company statement initially said that it did not plan to renew the franchise in 2022 and beyond, the, which is the date of termination of the, uh, of the franchise agreement between um, Ben & Jerry's and Ben & Jerry's Israel. It appears that the independent board's intention was to stop doing business in Israel altogether initially. However, there was a backlash. Uh, with the Jewish lobbies and power men flexing their muscles, the, he the heat became too much for Unilever. Indeed, after suggestions that Ben and Jerry's decision may run full, I'm quote here, full of anti-boycott laws in a number of US states, Florida governor Ron DeSantis placed parent company Unilever on a list of scrutinized companies that boycott Israel. Again, I quote here, scrutinized companies that boycott Israel on the 3rd of August, 2021. Then various um, US states followed, starting with the state of Arizona, which committed to totally divest from Unilever by September, 2021. Then the state of New Jersey gave Unilever 90 days notice of divestment action. And in fine, the states of New York, New Jersey, Arizona, Florida, Illinois and Texas may have divested a combined $1 billion in pension fund investments from Unilever, concluding Ben and Jerry's action violated the, the uh, anti-boycott laws. Again, I quote here. So Unilever stopped the bloodbath um, in, uh, in brackets by bending to these conservatives and lobbying uh, uh, forces. Firstly, it amended Ben and Jerry's statement posted on Ben and Jerry's website, confirming that its subsidiary would keep on operating in Israel beyond 2022. 
against the independent sports rumored intention to withdraw totally from Israel. And then Unilever sold its Ben and Jerry's division in Israel to the franchisee, Avi Zinger, from American Quality Products for an undisclosed sum of money, granting Zinger the right to continue selling Ben and Jerry's products and of a brand's name to customers born in Israel, both in Israel and in the um, occupied Palestinian territory. So Ben and Jerry's reaction to this was very swift, uh, as they tweeted, I quote here, we continue to believe it is inconsistent with Ben and Jerry's value for our ice cream to be sold in the uh, occupied Palestinian territory. They also said in the tweets, we are aware of Unilever announcement and while our parent company has taken this decision, we do not agree with it. Then Ben and Jerry's continued in the tweets with uh, Unilever's arrangement means Ben and Jerry's in Israel will be owned and operated by American quality products. Our company will no longer benefit from Ben and Jerry's in Israel. And then Ben and Jerry's did the inconceivable something which had never been done before, they actually filed a lawsuit against their parent company, Unilever, in federal court in Manhattan, Manhattan, sorry, in New York, um, on the 5th of July, 2022, alleging that their parent company is in violation with the provisions of the acquisition agreement from uh, April 2000 over the sale. And uh, the sale being the uh, sale of the uh, um, Ben & Jerry's Israel to the local franchisee and that such sales should be stopped. This sale, Ben and Jerry's contends, is in breach of a social mission decision statement ben, made by Ben and Jerry's independent board of directors in violation with the government structure set up by the acquisition agreement in 2000. In a televised interview, co-founder Ben Cohen said, and I quote here, that the agreement gave authority over the social mission to the independent board of Ben and Jerry's. Unilever has usurped their authority and reversed the decision that was made, and we can't allow that to happen. We can't sit idly by. So you see, this independent board of directors at Ben & Jerry's is backed by the co-founders Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield, uh, the guys who initially founded the uh, Ben & Jerry's. So this is all really harming the DNA of, uh, of Ben & Jerry's here and uh, by ricochet, uh, Unilever's reputation. In the meantime, Unilever actually stopped paying the directors of his independent board of directors um, their salaries. They actually stopped paying them, turn off the, the valves. On the 22nd of August, 2022, the U.S. District Judge Andrew Carter in Manhattan said Ben & Jerry's did not deserve an immediate injunction against the sale because Ben & Jerry's failed to show it would suffer irreparable harm. The judge did not decide the lawsuit's merit yet, okay? But it, it refused to take an interim measure rescinding the sale at this point in time. So by 27th of September, 2022, Ben & Jerry's filed a, an amended complaint with the federal court in Manhattan with Unilever's response due by the 1st of November, 2022. So I snooped around the internet to have a look at uh, um, this amended complaint and also Unilever's response since we are today the 15th of November, but I was unable to actually find these documents online. So I guess that is still a uh, shred under the, um, you know, this sort of cloud of uh, 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 sort of privacy and, and confidentiality while uh, um, both parties, both sides are actually preparing the weapons and ammunitions to uh, to um, to fire, uh, you know, uh, uh, at the next hearing, court hearing. So um, stay tuned for that. We wait and see for these court hearings coming through because this is when the uh, um, basically the uh, legal issues on on this matter will be uh, will be assessed by the judge in Manhattan. Also, at the end of September 2022, Ben & Jerry's expanded its legal action to target Unilever in London, UK, where Unilever is headquartered. So not only is Ben & Jerry's um, targeting the US subsidiary of Unilever by having filed this um, you know, lawsuit in Manhattan, but it's also now going after the uh, 
the um, uh, the mother land, the mothership, sorry, in the, and uh, the parent company in, uh, in in London, where Unilever is headquartered. So this is where we stand at the moment. And um, as I said, it's a completely brand new scenario. I mean, to be honest, I really do think it was uh, long in the making because there was too much of a discrepancy between what um, Ben and Jerry's directors and co-founders envisioned in terms of social mission and the uh, financial and economical risks that the top management at Unilever would be ready to take for these guys and as soon as it started you know really damaging the bottom line with all these uh, pension funds divesting from uh, the Unilever shares which by ricochet um just made the uh, Unilever share plunge, I, I suppose. Uh, then they, that's just when, you know, Unilever just uh, threw the towel and said, that's, that's it, I'm done here. And, um, I, and so the questions that the judges in the US and the UK will have to answer during the two lawsuits filed by J Ben & Jerry's against the parent company Unilever are as follows. Does Ben & Jerry's, a wholly owned subsidiary of Unilever, has the legal capacity of filing a lawsuit against its parent company. In other words, were such lawsuits validly filed by the legal entity Ben & Jerry's against Unilever? Is the sale laws lawful under applicable US and or uh, UK current corporate law? By the sale, I refer to this uh, sale of Ben & Jerry's Israel to the local franchisee Avi Zinger, um, in um, in um, September 2022. So is this uh, sell of the Israeli business lawful under applicable US and or UK current corporate law? Is the sell lawful under the agreement, under the acquisition agreement dating uh, April 2000? If a sale breaches the terms of the acquisition agreement, are there any contractual provisions in this agreement and or any applicable US and or UK current corporate laws that may allow to set aside the terms of the acquisition agreement, therefore creating an exception to the application of the terms of the agreement in relation to the sale of the Israeli business. If the sale breaches the terms of the agreement and there are no exceptions there or exceptional circumstances that can be used to justify such contractual breach, should the sale be resigned, terminated, and Ben and Jerry's Israel returned to Ben and Jerry's, the company um, incorporated in Vermont, Ben and Jerry's Homemade Holdings Inc. Another question that the judges are going to have to answer: <laughs> If a sale um, should not be terminated. Would the allocation of damages, financial damages, or other form of material and or financial compensation be appropriate to repair the prejudices suffered by Ben and & Jerry's and its independent board of directors? So answers to each one of these key issues in these two legal cases, which are going to you know, um, move forward in parallel, may vary from judge to judge in the US and the UK. So that's going to be exciting. We're going to see how this is going to pan out. But um, at the moment, you know, it's it's all up in the air. And um, um, I, I really can't predict how it may go. Although I have not read the acquisition agreement from 2000, which is, of course, not available freely on the Internet, I am confident that the judges will find that Unilever breached the terms of the acquisition agreement in relation to respecting the authority of a social mission given to the independent board of um, uh, Ben and Jerry's in the context of the Israeli sale and its aftermath. While the obvious legal consequences should be to rescind the sale, the Israeli sale, which is probably executed under an English law governed sale agreement entered into between Unilever PLC and the Israeli company American Quality Products, directed by Avi Zinger, I doubt that the US and UK judges will order such termination of the Israeli sale, especially since they do not have jurisdiction over assets located in Israel. So in short, while I think that Ben & Jerry's is correct 
from a legal standpoint that the acquisition agreement from 2000 is breached by the Israeli cell, it is likely that the US and UK judges decide, in case they agree with my, 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 my opinion, uh, to prioritize another, another type of remedy than rescinding the cell in Israel, such as, for example, allocating financial damages to Ben and Jerry's and its independent boards of directors who are no longer paid a salary. So one thing which is for sure is that the misalignment between Ben and Jerry's and Unilever's environmental, social, and governance ESG priorities, that's what they are called in the uh, corporate parlance, ESG priorities. So I repeat, environmental, social, and governance. So basically, this misalignment between Ben and Jerry's and Unilever's ESG priorities has just exploded out, sort of sp sprouted out in the open. Uh, well, I think it was bubbling under the surface for quite some time, to be very honest. And it's unlikely to recede this misalignment in the years to come. So Unilever has made a fool of Ben and Jerry's independent board of uh, directors, uh, making them lose their face, castrating their actions and social mission decisions and statements, you know, by taking over the Ben and Jerry's website by changing the mission statement that they had made about the OPT, the um, occupied Palestinian territory on there, and then by actually, you know, going around the uh, board of directors and selling the uh, Israeli business to the Israel to the local Israeli franchisee. This is this is um, you can't come back from that. This 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 is uh, damage beyond repair. So there will be no way back. And Unilever, being the parent company of its wholly owned subsidiary, be it Ben & Jerry's, will probably annihilate the independent board of directors in the next few years. They're just going to, um, to get them out. That's, that's it. And somehow they're going to uh, um, breach the, uh, the acquisition agreement on that aspect. And I really do think that uh, um, this, this independent board of directors is just going to be stripped out from all its authority and, uh, and any kind of remaining power. However, this strategy, which I'm foreseeing, will run a full of the brand's DNA and consumers' expectations that companies have more ESG goals and campaigns rather than less in this, you know, new uh, Aquarius era, which is coming uh, we're coming up in uh, a very, very, very soon for us um, in, in around, you know, uh, March 2022, 20, 2023. So I therefore predict that in the long run, Ben & Jerry's will, loo will lose sale and its customers base because it will have lost its soul once its um, uh, independent board of uh, directors has been gutted out from the company and the social mission uh, is now driven by Unilever. So in the end, will Unilever will, will be a loser too, and will probably have to either sell out the Ben and Jerry's business or take it public and independent again. So that's what I'm seeing at the moment. You can um, uh, read a um, an obviously recent version of this article on our website crefovi.com in English and on our website crefovi.fr in French. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter subscription plan um, on uh, our stores in uh, in uh, for the English version of our content on crefovicom slash store and in for the French version of our content on crefovicfr slash magasin. Thank you so much for joining. It's been a pleasure to be with you and bye for now.